Hello and welcome to a special episode of Disciple Dojo Study Bible Reviews. We're not actually reviewing a study Bible in this episode. Instead, you're going to get a Disciple Dojo, we'll call it mm, frugality hack. This is something that, as a Bible nerd, I have been doing for years, actually decades now, and it saved me a lot of money. Now, let's be honest, Bibles are not cheap. Good study Bibles are definitely not cheap. And then they have these things called premium Bibles. Premium Bibles, some of you may not even know what this is, but these are super expensive, handcrafted, finely produced Bibles that can cost over $100 actually way over a hundred dollars. Now, some people really nerd out on premium Bibles. There's channels here on YouTube and Instagram you can follow. They'll show you all about premium Bibles and the different types of leather bindings and the page text blocks and the gilding and the ribbons and all of that stuff. But let's be honest, not everybody can afford a premium Bible. And especially if you have more than one, if you have a shelf of study Bibles and you like to keep up with biblical scholarship and you care more about the content of what's in the Bible than the presentation or the aesthetics, you want to have a number of study Bibles on your shelf and that can get pricey. So here is what I do. This is me, my own thing at Disciple Dojo. If a Bible is available in paperback, a study Bible, I get the paperback. It's way cheaper. Sometimes it's 20, 30, even $50 cheaper to get the paperback and you're getting the exact same content. Now, once you have your paperback study Bible in whatever it is, and, and not all publishers publish paperback versions, but I'm thinking of more popular study Bibles like the ESV study Bible or life application study Bible. For this video, I'm going to be using the NIV basic study Bible that we just reviewed here on the channel. Once you have a paperback study Bible, you have a few options. One, you can buy a Bible cover. They sell these online. They have pouches where you can keep your highlighters, your pencils. Some of them zip up. Some of them have different closure flaps, whatever. You can go online, find a Bible cover that matches the size of your Bible. Sometimes that can be tricky. And you can carry your Bible in a Bible cover. That's option one. Option two, you can buy your paperback Bible and then you can send it to a Bible rebinding company or individual who's a book binder, and they can do a custom binding. Now, years ago, after using for almost 20 years, my favorite teaching Bible, my archeological study Bible by Zondervan, the cover wore out and I had to use a custom Bible binder. I found someone here in Charlotte that did it for me and I was able to add some extra bookmarks and it's a nice leather binding that's going to last as long as this Bible. This will probably outlive me. But again, it was not cheap. It costs money to have good craftsmanship. That's no secret. There's a third option. And this one saves a lot of money. You can buy your paperback Bible and then you can use good old contact paper. That's what we're going to be doing in this Disciple Dojo Study Bible Review special episode on how to custom bind your Bible on a budget. And by on a budget, I mean almost free. So before we do that, as always, if you haven't subscribed, we would really love for you to subscribe. We are getting close to 10,000 subscribers, and at 10,000 subscribers, we're doing a giveaway of the entire Yale Anchor Bible Dictionary. Talk about not cheap. Look this up on Amazon and see how much it goes for. And we are giving it away once we hit 10,000 subscribers. So the only way that you will know to enter that contest when we do is to subscribe and click the notifications icon when you do. Another way, as always, to help Disciple Dojo, everything we do, every single thing is donor funded. All our material is free. All of our resources are free. We just ask that if people appreciate this ministry and they want to support it, that they give whatever they can a month over at our Disciple Dojo donors page. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. You can give us five bucks a month. You can give us 5,000 bucks a month. Whatever you are able to do and whatever you think this ministry is worth, we would really appreciate you partnering with us financially. That's the only way we're able to do any of this. Thank you to those of you who are ongoing Disciple Dojo supporters. Without you, this channel literally would not exist. Okay, let's cover a study Bible on a budget. Now, depending on how obsessive you want to be about this, this can take a few minutes or it can take a long time. 
depending on how you want this to look, how you want things to line up, it's up to you. I'm just going to show you the way I keep my paperback study Bibles in good condition on the shelf. I should say, these are the Bibles that I have on my shelf, not that I carry around for everyday use. If you carry one for everyday use, this will give it a little more protection, but you still may get those frayed corner edges. And over time, you may have to do this process again, or you may have to buy a Bible cover or have your Bible ultimately rebound. That's up to you. But for Bibles that are going to be on the shelf that you're going to use periodically, that you're going to consult when you're preparing your small group lessons, your sermons, your Sunday school teaching sessions, whatever you do, that doesn't involve everyday rough and rugged use of your Bible, this is as good as anything I've found. So you are going to need a paperback study Bible, whichever one you choose. Like I said, I'm using the NIV basic study Bible. You're going to need some contact paper. Now you can buy contact paper in large rolls, although it's a little harder to work with because it comes rolled up and you have to unroll it and lay it flat. And it's, it's a little tricky at times. For smaller Bibles, though, they make these pre-cut sheets of contact paper, and you can buy these for next to nothing at any office supply store or craft store. And then lastly, you will need a decent X-Acto blade or a nice pair of sharp scissors. That's up to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, and contact paper, I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's shiny, glossy on one side, and then the other side is the sticky side, and it has the paper backing here. So we're going to take this contact paper and we're going to fold it over and cover the front of the Bible. Then we're going to do the same thing on the back of the Bible, cover it, trim it. And then if needed, if there's not enough overlap, then we'll put a little extra reinforcement on the spine of the Bible. So that's what's happening here. And I'll show you how it works. So we're going to do the front cover first. And I'm going to get to this, usually paperback Bibles have a crease right here, this crease edge. I'm going to fold that a little bit so that I can see it. I'm going to take the contact paper and I'm going to line it up into that crease edge. And what's going to happen is when I fold it over, then the front and the back of the cover are going to be reinforced with contact paper. So here's what that will look like. I'm going to find the edge here. This is probably the hardest part is finding this corner, especially if you don't have fingernails. Oh, almost so close. Come here, come here, come here. I should speed this up and play Benny Hill music in the background. Oh, almost had you. Ha, boom, okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna unfold this. I don't care about the bottom sheet. I just care about this sticky side. I'm gonna take it all the way up and butt it up against the corner, the, the crease area on my Bible. I'm gonna make sure it's flat. And then I'm going to take my Bible and I'm going to fold it over and I press it down, working my way out so it's nice and flat. So you see there's some sticky side here. There's some sticky side on the bottom. You can see a little bit. Now, this is where Mr. Exacto Blade comes in. Before I do the rest, I'm going to make a cut here. And you can fold this up to reinforce this side, but it will, it will, I don't know. It, it doesn't look right. It doesn't sit right. I prefer to just trim that little strip off. And then I do the same thing on this other side and then make a cut there. So now the inside is nice and glossy and thicker than the paperback. And now I'm going to take the other side and make a little extra here. And this is where you want to be careful. I don't want to say careful because it's not like anything you're doing is dangerous, but let me see if I can get the camera to see it. You want it to lay flat and you want it to unfold flat without wrinkles. And so I do this by catching the edge and pulling it kind of tight. I start from the middle and I make my crease and then I push out from the middle. And if you do it right, 
you're not left with a lot of overlap and you don't have air bubbles. And so now I'm going to just push this the rest of the way. So I'm going to walk it forward and you can't really see, but this is folded over, but watch, I'm walking forward. And as I walk forward and smooth out the cover, walk it forward, walk it forward. I'm not getting these air bubbles. And now with the overhang on this side, you have to trim right at this crease here. So it folds underneath. Hold it over, smush it flat, same thing on the bottom, hold it over, smush it flat, and then that just leaves me with this part of the spine, and I want it to be flat, again I don't want bubbles, so I put the Bible on its edge, and I kind of roll it over. and then press any bubbles out from the side. And it looks like this. So I'm gonna smooth it down. Now I have these edges. Mr. Handy Exacto, come in here, trim the edges. And there we go. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the back. Take my contact paper, find the edge. Peel it back. Once again, make this crease here on the paperback. Now lay my contact paper right in there, right up to the edge of the crease. Lay it flat and press down. Trim the edges. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull out a little bit roll it over so it's flush up against the edge press it down tight work my way out from the center smooth out so there's no air bubbles and then i find this crease right here and i make a cut the bottom there's not much because it was more lined up on the top and i just fold this over Fold the bottom under, and then I can trim off any excess, and then do the same thing that I did with the spine on the other side. I'm just gonna roll it over, press it down, push all the air bubbles out, and trim off the excess. And once you're done, you smooth everything out. Now contact paper may make the page curl up a little bit, can see and after sitting on the shelf laying flat putting some other heavy bibles on it eventually it'll flatten out and this is what you end up with it's pretty durable the edges aren't going to fray as easily if you spill something on it if you get some nicks some scrapes it's no big deal you have your paperback bible and this will last a lot longer than just the paperback by itself so there you have it. This is what I do with paperback Bibles. Now, I know that people that are into premium Bibles and Bible rebinders, they're probably just thinking, ugh, ugh, like they're throwing up in their mouth a little bit looking at this. But here's the deal. This cost me like a couple of bucks for a whole pack of contact paper. So literally pennies to do this. And this Bible, which will sit on the shelf, is going to last for decades and saying it'll last for decades may seem like a bold claim, but here's my TNIV study, but they don't even make this anymore. Some of you don't even know what the TNIV is because it's like 20 years old, but this has lasted me through a lot of use teaching Bible studies and doing seminars. And this has lasted me since the early 2000s. My ESV study Bible, I don't want the big, huge brick hardcover and I certainly don't want to pay to have some faux leather or especially some extravagant leather because I don't use the ESV study Bible as much as some people who really love it but it is a good resource 
We've reviewed it here on the channel. I do think it's worth having. And so I bought the paperback, threw some contact paper on it, and it sits on the shelf. Pull it out when I use it, and it stays nice, and the corners are crisp and sharp, and it doesn't have that frayed paperback feel. I did it with the Jewish Study Bible, my copy of the paperback Jewish Study Bible. Again, not going to be my go-to everyday study Bible, but I am going to consult it regularly. So for something that sits on the shelf, having contact paper on it keeps it in good condition. Does this look gorgeous and ornate and expensive? No, it doesn't. Does it look cheap? Sure, it is cheap. That's the whole point of this video. That's the reason that I do this. It saves money. And at the end of the day, you don't buy a study Bible for its cover. You don't buy it for its gilded paper. You don't buy it for how many ribbons it has. You don't buy it for any of that stuff. You buy it for the content. You buy it for the study notes. That's what you buy it for. You use it because it has resources in between the covers that make it worth it. So unless you need a super durable cover that's going to last you for years and years and years through regular use, reading every day, teaching from, holding while you're preaching. Yeah, then in that case, definitely spend the money on a leather binding that's going to last you for decades of use. But for everything else, don't waste money on the packaging. Pay for the content, get the cheapest version you can, throw some contact paper on it, and it'll last you as long as you need it. Now, I do not use the NIV Basic Study Bible regularly. I just use this as the example because I had it from a previous video that we had just done here on the channel. So I'll be giving this actual copy away. So if this interests you and you want it on your shelf, be sure you've subscribed to this channel and you've clicked the notifications icon. And in a future book giveaway, this is going to be one of the ones that we give away. So I hope this has helped you in some way, maybe helped you save a little money. Heck, with the money you were going to spend on an ornately covered Bible, you can use this method and then send Disciple Dojo the rest of that money as a thank you. Win-win. No, in all seriousness, though, this is what I do. I've been doing it for decades, so I just wanted to share it with people out there because for some of you, this may be what you end up doing to save money and to have your Bibles last a long time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time back here at Disciple Dojo.